you're on. Okay, <clears throat> this morning we're talking to John Bath, who is now a little over a hundred years old, and he's living in Green Hills here. He still gets around. I believe you still drive your own car. I do. Yeah, boy, that's great. <laughs> and everything. And we're going to try to get his uh, recollections of the way Ames looked way back when he came here in the middle 40s, 1946. So, uh, where were you born, John? I was born in Nebraska. Okay. Uh, a small county seat town called Auburn. That's down in the southeast corner of, uh, of Nebraska, about 60 miles south of Omaha. Yes, a good corn husker because we were both born in Nebraska, also out the Hastings area. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <coughs> We're on familiar territory already. <laughs> uh, and then uh, you grew up on a farm or what? Yes, I did. I grew up on a farm, a family of nine. There were nine of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's uh, where I lived until I uh, went away to school. And Was that at the University of Nebraska? Well, I first uh, went to Peru State College. Yes, okay. Uh, and that was only six miles from our farm. Oh yes, right. So uh, I was riding a horse in the early days uh, mm -hmm. uh, and went to high school at, at Peru also. So uh, my brothers were, while they were in college, I went along with them. I was in high school. So we... That was in the, the 19 teens and they were still riding horses. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that is great. <laughs> uh, Willie taught school in the, the Sand Hills of Nebraska a little oh. bit. And she had a student that I think rode a pony to, to get to school right. in time. But the, the cars were a lot fewer back oh, then. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, after you graduated from Peru, did you go on to school then? Yes, I did. Well, when I graduated, which was in 1932, as you know, that was in the depth of the Depression. Yeah, that's what, about when I was born, 1931. <laughs> so, And it was impossible to get a a teaching position. Of course, Peru, uh, Peru at that time was a teacher's college primarily, and yes. now it's a liberal arts school, but uh, mostly the people that went there were planning to teach, yeah. and jobs were not available. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, the only recourse was to go into graduate school. So I uh, then went to uh, Lincoln okay. and started graduate school. Well, she went to, to Hastings College, the oh, same yes. kind of an educational right. uh, prep. Well, I went to the University of Nebraska on a scholarship way back then. So, okay. Yeah. Familiar territory. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, after you graduated from there, did you come to Ames? Uh, when oh, I graduated from there, <clears throat> I went immediately into the Army. Okay. That was during the days of selective service and... Uh, I was on the list to be called up any time, uh, so uh, as soon as I graduated with my graduate degree, mm -hmm. well, I had done some teaching in the in the interim between my master's and going back for my okay. PhD. Okay. But uh, uh, I went directly into the service. The day I got my Ph.D., my local draft board, in those days the, draft, the local draft board didn't take any excuses. Yes, I, I remember. <laughs> when, your, when your number came up, and so my number came up, uh, uh, actually before I finished my Ph.D., and I told my major professor that I was called up and was going to have to leave, and he said, you couldn't leave now because you're too close to finishing. Yeah. And if they took you now, you would you'd have to start all over in your research when you came back. And so uh, he called the state director of social uh, of selective service Good. and told him the situation. And he said, let's just wait till he finishes. And so about the day after I finished and got, and got my degree, mm -hmm. my advanced degree, Local draft board says you're you're on. <laughs> that that would have been in the 1940s. Then. That's 42, spring 42. of 42. So you were involved as the Second World War. That's right. Now I went to Nebraska and went as soon as I graduated. I went to Korea. 
Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Well, a little different era. <laughs> right. Yeah. And were you overseas when uh, you were in the well, service? Well, it depends on what you call overseas. Mm -hmm. I spent most of my time uh, in the Aleutians. Oh, sure. In, in Alaska and the Aleutians. Uh, I was up there uh, about 18 months. Okay. And I was on a little island almost at the end of the, what they call the chain, the yes. ocean chain. Mm -hmm. I was almost out at the end of that chain and on a little island called Amchitka. Oh, sure. They were uh, had a, an air base and a deterrent force. And... Right. Okay. And a matter of fact, that base was the base from which our air force flew to Kiska and Attu yep. when, the, when it was occupied by the Japanese. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it was a big, big airfield there. It was a most of those islands in the Aleutians, you know, are very hilly and rough. Right. But our island was perfectly flat, except for one end, and so it made a good place for an airfield. Oh, sure. And we landed on the way to Korea at an island down in the Pacific, much like that. It was about two miles long, and so was the runway. Right. And that's all that was there. <laughs> that's all that was there. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then after the service is when you came to Iowa State then, right? That's right. This yeah. was the first position I had after I got out of service. Okay. How large was the university at that time? Oh, boy. I wish I could remember that specifically, but uh, I think maybe they had about, uh, see, that would have been 1946. I'm guessing there might have been between six and eight thousand, something like that. Okay. That, that's just a guess. That would fit together then because we talked to Herb Hunziker and he came here, I think it was in 1939, as a student and he said he thought they were around four to five thousand enrollment then. Yeah. So that, that's all right. Yeah. And it was the university and campus town was totally separated from the city, weren't they? Yes, they were pretty much. Yeah. Two separate entities. Right, right, okay, okay. <laughs> and that was after, did they still have the railroad trains running or was it the buses then? No, they had, uh, they still had uh, the dinky. Okay. Well, uh, the dinky had gone out of service shortly before I came. Right, right. So uh, I didn't see that except to hear the stories about the dinky. Yes, yeah. But uh, it was mostly the rail rather than buses at that time. Okay. Did you get into downtown Ames very much then? Oh, yes, because uh, I really lived downtown. Okay. My fir our first residence was on uh, Curtis Avenue, yes. just north of Roosevelt, uh, Roosevelt School. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was our really our trading area. And Did you have children that went to, to school in Ames? Yes, I had uh, three children and they all went to Roosevelt. To Roosevelt, right. Right. So I've been very interested in this recent discussion about I'll that. <laughs> <laughs> Should we open that place up again or not? <laughs> uh, I think there's a slim chance that that's going to happen, yeah. but that's, there's been a group that's really been pushing to... Yeah, well back in those years there were probably a lot more families that had children to go to school there. Oh, that's right. And now it's a, a little bit um, older, should I call them, population that yeah. doesn't have the school kids anymore. Yeah, well, there's still, there's still a lot of the, that area around Roosevelt School is a family-oriented place. Yes, yes. There's still some young children in that area. Okay, yeah. okay. I've heard many stories about the children that, that walked to Roosevelt if they didn't have to come across the railroad track right. to get there. Yeah, yeah, that worked out very well. Yeah. Uh, do you remember about uh, how large uh, Ames was at that time? I don't remember what the uh, stated population was at that time, uh, and I'm thinking that at that time they didn't include the, the university population in there. I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so it was pretty small. Yeah. But uh, I don't, I wouldn't want to quote a figure because yeah. it was probably well, way sure. off. 
Well, you and I were talking a little bit before we got started here about the traffic lights, and probably the only one in town was that Highway 69 and 30. Uh, that, was, that was about true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you get into downtown Ames very much? Oh, yes, as I told you, because we lived uh, in the downtown area. Right, right. We were, uh, we shopped uh, mainly at Fairway. Yes. Which is right down there where the First National Bank is now. Well, that's right, yeah. And uh, so, yes, we got, we got downtown uh, quite a bit. Went to Tilden's. Tilden's, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And uh, see, was McFarland Clinic was still downtown at that time? McFarland Clinic was downtown, uh, just in the same, uh, same location that the uh, Tribune is now in that area. And, yes, yes. Uh, there Same were very, very few doctors on the staff at that time. Okay. Was the old Doc McFarland oh, still yeah. there? Yes, yeah. he was there. Okay, and I think uh, Willie took our children to Hildebrand. That is actually, yeah. Hildebrand was our doctor, our okay. family doctor. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yes. So, and it's interesting that later on when I moved to Forest Glen, I lived next door to him. Hildebrand. Really? Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, yes, he was. He was quite a doctor. See, the hospital was there already then. When the hospital was there. Up on Thirteenth Street. Yeah, that was one of my early collection or recollections was of going up at the what I call the northern border of Ames at that time. It was Thirteenth Street. Okay. And there was hardly anything north of 13th Street except cornfields or, or fields of one kind or another. There were hardly any buildings north of there, but of course, exception, an exception would be the hospital was, right. was north of there. But Was that a paved road then? It was, no, it was gravel road. Okay. It was a gravel road. And how did you get to Carr's Pool then? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you could go. You could go uh, from our place on Curtis Avenue yeah. up to Thirteenth, and then there was still a, a road that goes down to Cars Pool. And there, a lot of youngsters rode their bicycles down oh, yeah. Cars Pool. Oh yeah, yeah. Going yeah. down by bike was that the yeah. That was the big thing. Well, that was quite a pool still running when we came to town with the oh, yeah. kids. Yeah. Dad Carr, of course, was. Uh, he was an active Kiwanian. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he was uh, uh, instrumental in that, what they call it, Tiny Tots program. I imagine, where they yeah. they took the real small children yeah. and taught them how to swim. And well, he just became a father almost to all of them, didn't he? Oh, he did. And father, he had, mom, car. <laughs> right. And they had several adopted children, too, that yes. kept in their mm -hmm. home. And, yeah, he was a great benefactor to Ames. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little different than the big swimming pool that they built on 13th Street now. Right. On the side of a hill. That's very different. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> okay. And uh, Tilden's was down on Main Street. Uh, was there a fair, fair store or was it Fairway that was down in? There was a fair store. Okay. And it was, uh, it must have been in that same area as Tilden's, if I remember. I think it was. Do you remember, Willie? Yes, it was. Okay. <laughs> now, I can remember going into Tilden's and uh, with my wife, and if she wanted any goods, they were way stacked to the ceiling, and they had, yeah. had one of these movable ladders that they had to go and oh, bring down the bolts. Of <laughs> good memory. <laughs> yeah. Did they have the pneumatic tube system for making change? I don't believe they did. I don't yeah. remember if, if they did. Okay. I, I just don't remember that they had yeah. that. It's, I think somebody kind of remembered that they paid the clerk and they'd put it in a little capsule that, and send it upstairs and get the chain. That could Yeah, okay. I knew that was true of the Montgomery Ward store that was at the west end of Main Street. It was still there when we came there, yeah. yeah right. That's the flower shop now, isn't it? Everett's? Yeah. That's, yeah, Everett's? That's right. Yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of changes that you've seen. Oh. Yeah. What about the restaurants and the cafes and so on? Well, the, uh, uh, they were sort of few and far between. Uh, the one out in uh, Dogtown, as I called it, uh, sure. College Town, was uh, oh, a restaurant. 
have to look at my... Uh, was that Herb Hunsicker's? No, that was Howard Thiel's Cafe. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Howard Thiel's Cafe. Yeah. And uh, when we went out to eat as a family, that was the most frequent place. At Howard so that Thiel. Was quite a ways from our place, but Howard was always so congenial. He met all these customers and came and visited at your... He was. Yeah. So he was, uh, he was a great guy and, and had good food. And then the downtown place that I remember was Henry's Hamburgers. Oh, sure. Henry's Hamburgers. And they were, uh, if I remember correctly, they were 20 cents a piece. Five for a dollar. Five for a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, uh, that was the equivalent of... Uh, I think we got into a little bit of that also. Did you get out to the Solar Inn on South Duff? Or? Yes. Yeah, we were, that's, uh, that was the main place in Ames at one time for yeah. dinner parties. Mm -hmm. That, yes, I've been out there many times. The Solar Inn, yeah. Solar Inn. Uh, and it's good memories. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anything else you want to add about uh, downtown or movie theaters or anything? Well, of course, Georgia Brock's. Yes. Theater on Main Street was the big one, and then uh, I'm not sure that he owned the other one at the east end of Main Street. I don't remember the name of that theater, but it was a very small one. I think Rebach had control of that one too. Yeah, yeah. But when the Collegian built was built, that was uh, the big the, show place. That was the big show place. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, that was always a special treat for the for us to go to the movie because we didn't go very often. Yeah. And I think they, uh, the only matinee they had was on Saturdays, and the kids liked to, if we would let them go, if it was a movie that we thought was appropriate, they went sure, down sure. to the Saturday afternoon movie. Back when the parents had a little influence <laughs> in what the kids could watch. <laughs> right. uh, uh, Floyd Pincus, do you know him? I know him very well. I guess he had a, a small bowling alley up in the second floor on what is now the Lucalons building. Well, I've heard about that, but I was never up there, so I can't speak to okay, that, okay. that at all. I don't, don't, I don't remember that. I only remember when he... What was the rest of that building? It's kind of across the street from the Parsecy there. Well, let's see. Way back when we came here, there was a carpet, carpeting or flooring or something in the back end there. That was about all I would remember of it. And then, of course, uh, there was a... Early on in the west end of that, I think there was a bank before the Ames Savings and Loan went in, about where the Ames Savings and Loan. Be, yeah. And there might have been a bank that preceded them. Okay. But uh, there wasn't wasn't too much on the south side of the street at that yeah. time. Well, J.C. Penney's was there a little east further. Right. Yeah, just kind of across that little park now from right. local lawns, yeah. Was that there when you came to town? Yeah, it was there okay. when we okay. came to town. So they kind of competing with Tildens and, Tildens, and, right. and down the east for the end. Right. Okay. Did Gerbach have a, a movie theater down here in Campus Town that ultimately now became the Kingland? Uh, it's all restored now? Was yes, there was. A, I think the only... Uh, I think it was a movie theater. Yes, there was one movie theater. Uh, I was trying to think of what the name of that movie theater was. I guess I can't uh, can't come up with that theater. Yeah, I can't come up with the name for it either. It was on the south side of the street there. South side of the street. Yeah. Right. Did you? I believe it was a. I believe it just called the Ames Theater in, in College Town. Ames oh, Theater. I believe be. that's what it was called. Yeah, okay. Did you get down into camp in College Town, Dogtown, very often, or? Well, uh, not that often because I, when I came to work, <coughs> I sometimes walked from okay. downtown, or I often walked in the good weather, uh, and so the about the only time we'd go to Dogtown would be to. To uh, go to that little restaurant that I was talking right, about, the Teal's restaurant. Yeah, 
and uh, rarely went to that movie theater out there. It was yeah. always downtown. You say when you went to work, uh, just for the record, what department were you in then at EM? I was in psychology. Right, okay. Yeah. And, along with Fred Bar Bargum and, right. and so on, yeah. And when I came in the, uh, it was right at the beginning of the, a lot of service men were coming back from the service. And the GI Bill. <laughs> the GI Bill, and there was a lot of increase in the enrollment, and so they had to put up a whole bunch of temporary buildings and there were, some of them were close to the engineering building. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in, when I came here, I, my office was in what they call Building H. And oh, it was, sure. It was one of the building. old barracks building. Yep. And it was attached to Beardshire, the back of Beardshire. Yeah. You could go from, from Beardshire right out into... Those buildings were still there when I came here, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Building H, and there were a couple more, too. Yes, there, there were. Yeah. There were, three or, there were three or four of them. And, yeah, as... You handed me a note about Pamel Court. That was a temporary housing that the Navy and them had right. during the Second World War. Yes. Yeah, I've known a lot of people that lived in Pamel Court. Yeah. Those are kind of a plywood box, and then was it later that they built those steel Quonset type residences? Yes. Okay. Yes, they, they did build those later, and I don't know how much what the lapse of time was between the time they had the original ones and the time they put up the steel, steel ones. Yeah, okay. But George Burnett also lives out here in a... Yes, he does. A, and uh, I think he lived in Pamela Court he, in the steel ones or something as he was going He told to me that one time. Yeah, yeah. That he lived He and his wife, they had a, a child or two then, a young girl. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> and that was a neighborhood to itself also. That was, yeah, they had their own little grocery store. Yes, and, and Hamel Grocery. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they took care of each other. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah, they, living so close to one another, they had to, yeah. yeah. Well, and lack of transportation and the modern bus facilities and everything, they had to just kind of look out for each other. Right. <laughs> and those Quonsets, I know, our daughter and husband lived in that one Quonset for one year. Said it was so cold in the winter time you could hardly stand it. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, I remember and tell lots of stories about yeah, the winters yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of uh, <coughs> uh, automobile dealers, when I came to town, uh, Grant Quam yes, had a dealership out in the college town there, mm -hmm. and. My recollection of that, the location of it is not too good, but I think it was roughly east of the Collegiate Methodist Church. Okay. I think okay. that's about where it was. And okay. I remember going to him because when I came to town, I did not have a car. I had sold mine when I went into service. Yeah. And so uh, it was pretty instrumental to have a car, and I went to him to see if I could uh, get a car and he said oh it's going to be impossible there's so many people on the list now yes. just, just getting up and then I went down to the Dunlap brothers yes on uh, East Lincoln way there and uh, they took my name but I waited and waited for several months and nothing was available yeah. so I ended up buying a, a used car I did right. find a used car that was my first yeah. <laughs> first car well it didn't grant qualm end up collecting cars? Oh, he did. Yes, okay. And he still, his boys yes. have, a, have a beautiful collection. Yeah. In fact, a few months ago, they brought several samples of their antique cars right out here to Green Hills. Oh, really? And had them on display. And the, the old folks here just... Reminisce. Reminisce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, we uh, interviewed the Senior Bowling League and uh, they're in their 90s and stuff, still bowling and sure. very active and stuff. Right. And uh, I think it was Harvey Thompson said, I gotta go now. He said, I've got a date with 21 girls. I said, what? <laughs> he said, yeah, the girls basketball team is gonna come out from Iowa State to Green Hills. And yeah. He said, I gotta see them. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they come out every season. They come out and pay a visit. And that's, hey, that's great. Yeah. And that, that's good. Green Hills has done so much of that and getting activities for the people out here. Oh, yes, it's, it's been great. It's just great. Uh, this transportation, 
especially those that don't drive anymore. It's yeah. their only way of getting around and to doctor's appointments and uh, yeah. and uh, to the athletic events. Our, our neighbor, Dean Olson, who lives right out by Bloomington, where that used to be, he drove the bus for Green Hills for a number of years. Oh, yeah. And he became friends with the people. He'd take them down to the airport and get them on uh, for their flights and everything, pick them up. And he, he really, really enjoyed the people out here at Green Hills, yeah. You mentioned the name Olson. Do you remember the Olson Greenhouse on North Highland? It was, that was Oslin, wasn't it? No. Was it Olson? It was Olson, I believe. Okay, okay. And uh, that was a, that was a really, uh, in those days, a really modern, he had a big display of uh, plants and everything. In the greenhouse. In the okay. greenhouse, just off of Highland. And I remember driving back there many times to pick okay. up flowers. Yeah. Uh, Osland had the drug store. Drug business. store. Right. Yeah, right. downtown. And Osland he, Drug. Yeah, okay. They ended up in the Octagon House. That's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Which yeah. also is long gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing that. Uh, yeah. We were in that when Osland had a, a paint removal process oh. in kind of a cattle stock tank, and I'm, I'm sure it was probably sodium hydroxide or something. He would like, we had a door stripped down, cleaned up there. And uh, we were inside of the Octagon House when it was still standing there and everything. But uh, he was kind of down in the basement with that operation. Right. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember I didn't have I ever have anything done there, but I remember that was one of the main things yeah. I have done down mm -hmm. there. But you have a few notes that you wrote down. Is there anything else that you can you want to talk about or? Well. Uh, uh, service stations at that time were, yeah. uh, I remember Bourne's on the East Lincoln Way mm -hmm. was one of the main service stations. And then uh, that Ames Tourist Court, it was called, and it was in the same location as the, uh, that Ames Motor Lodge is now, you remember where the Ames Motor Lodge is, just east of Duff on the south side of yeah. Lincoln Way. Yeah. At that time, that's where this, uh, it was pretty unusual type of uh, motor court at that time, because I remember the uh, the owner prided himself that you could put your car inside. Right. And they drove in a court, and their parking place was right next to their room. Kind of a, a lean-to uh, right. place to park, right? Now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've heard was, about that. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Uh, uh, I think it was advertised as one of the unique motor lodges around the country at that time. On the west end of town, wasn't it the Rainbow Court, Rainbow? Yes. There at about uh, Franklin and... Uh, and uh, Franklin and Lincoln Way. Lincoln Way, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember too much about that. No, but. that's all long gone and... Uh, oh, yes. And it's now a video store. That's something. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was there a long time. And there was also a small motor court of some kind just south of Lincoln Way on Duff, wasn't there? Just kind of cabins? That yes. I know there was, but I don't I don't really remember much about yeah. that. And I don't know the name of it yeah. or anything. I, I remember kind of when they tore it down then. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, those are the the schools, of course, were at that time, Central Junior High was down across where the parking lot for the City Hall is now. Right, right. And all my kids went to the, that as well as uh, high school. Senior high school, yeah. And then some of them got to go up to the new high school when, okay. when that was built. So that was, and I remember when they had that athletic field for the high school down on south of Lincoln Way. Yes, yes. Down there where the, uh, High V East yeah. is kind of in that area. Kind of just across the road there now from the DOT. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and that's where they had that big field house too, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, that's where they had the field house. Yeah. And originally there was, or maybe it was in the early days of that, they had a roller skating rink in there. Okay, okay. And it might have been in the gym area, I'm not sure, but uh, there it was... It seems to me that Whetstone said something uh, 
T.J. Larson interviewed her, and I just put all of that together. But she did a lot of roller skating in, in, in that general area. Yeah, that's, that's that would be about right. That would then. be about where it was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that did they still have the Chautauqua when you first got here? Uh, yes, there were uh, there were a couple of summers at least I can remember of okay. Chautauquas. And I guess I remember more of the Chautauquas uh, earlier on before I came to Ames over in Nebraska. Yes. Okay. Chautauquas were big. Oh, big celebration. You bet. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful, yeah. 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 And uh, T. J. Larson, T.J. Larson also interviewed Dale Brentnall. Oh, yes. And he was at the Crawford and, uh, was it Meeker? He was principal of two schools, Crawford yes. and I think Meeker, was that right? Meeker, I think that's right. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, someone that you'd interviewed before we started here, Joe, uh, no, Elmer Oren. Oh yes, yes. Elmer Oren was, uh, was uh, I think Elmer and his wife were the first couple to invite me and my wife to dinner at their home after we came to Ames. Is that right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, and he was at Crawford, wasn't he? Was he was at Crawford. The industrial Arts or Industrial Education? That's right. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, we talked to him because he was in Patton's tank army uh, in oh, the Second yeah. World War going across. Uh, they didn't get started in France, but they were heavily into Belgium yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, he had a lot of stories about the Sherman tank. <laughs> oh, yes. I... Yeah, yeah. That, that's great. Uh, any other people? Uh, the Gabrocks lived up on North Highway 69. Right. Did you realize what they did with their driveway? Um, Alan Sponheimer down at a historical uh, building, he showed me an aerial shot and their house sat a little crooked with the world. They took the driveway in and made a great big G where you would park and from the air that was the Gabrox with that big G. Is that so? Yeah. Well, yeah. I've never heard that before. And that's why the house is a little a crooked. Little crooked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think there's a swimming pool. Yes. Yes, there. And uh, it was out by itself on a farm then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But in the, it was one of the really show places oh, yeah. early on. Yeah. Yeah. And he must have done a lot of flying, I guess. Or yes. Love to fly. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. yeah the, then the churches too in Ames. When we came, we visited around, and not sure where we wanted to make our have our church home, and we finally ended up at the at the Congregational Church there, catty cornered from the post office downtown. Yes. Okay. And it turned out to be the first church in in Ames. You know, yes. it's the oldest church in Ames. Right. And uh, so we've been members of that ever since. The Methodist Church right across the right. street south is maybe bigger, but you were the first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we got started uh, with Memorial Union. Oh, sure. I mean, Memorial Lutheran right oh. across the street from the Union. Sure. And we've been there ever since. We still go there. And, uh, right. Right across the street west was the coal yards and the train that went through. They had all the coal bins and that sure. train went diagonally across the intersection there. And, yeah, a lot of memories. <laughs> oh, a lot of memories. Yeah. 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 When did you retire from the university then? I retired in 1981. 81. Okay. Mm -hmm. I went the limit at that time. There was a limit. Nowadays, you know, uh, yeah, you you can stay on as long as you're you're capable. You're capable. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I remember going to uh, oh, let's see. Uh, President Hilton, uh, wife. Oh yeah. Uh, she started the uh, retirees. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, office uh, where the, anybody that was a retiree and had a question that mm -hmm. she. Could go. And I went to her when I was approaching the uh, my retirement yeah. age. Yeah. Uh, well, at 65, and I said, "What? What's the recommended time to retire?" And she said. She said, as long as you are competent and feel competent, says you go as long as you can. Right, right. 
And so I did go until 70, and that was the limit at that time. You had to retire. Yeah, I guess it was, yeah. 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 So. <laughs> yeah. Helen LeBaron Hilton. Right. Yeah. And she also, along with the retirees, uh, helped start the College for Seniors. Yes. Which is the continuing lifelong learning, they call it now. That's, uh, I was fortunate to be on the first committee to form that. Is that College right? for Seniors. Okay. Helen got a few of us together that were uh, approaching retirement, and yeah, I was uh, on that first board. When was that about? Well, that would have been about 1971, uh, about the time when I retired. 71, okay. Yeah. Uh, because I've been quite involved and was chairman of College for Seniors for a couple of years. Oh, sure. And uh, we worked with Betty Licht. Oh, yeah. And everything, but you preceded that by a lot. Oh, yes, yes. You know, and I think we talk about being in existence for something like 20 years. Uh, to, in fact, tomorrow we're going to go to another class that Jorgen Rasmussen teaches. Oh, yes. And he, he's from political science, but he, he loves to teach his classes. He does, and I've taken some of his classes. Yeah, isn't he great? <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he puts on a show. <laughs> he does. Yeah. And his memory. When I think about my own problems of memory, he can call up dates and I know and it. Time period that I just just amazed at what it, it makes me jealous. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he uh, he's just great on the, his recollection of yeah he really is yeah yeah and uh, I think Stefan Schmidt now at the, the department is going to be the same way as he keeps it going yes keeps it going forever. And well, I guess I've. Uh, Taken at least one class in that college for seniors, which is now only as you know. Yeah. Uh, I guess I've taken a class at every term, and this last term I think going to be my last because I don't find anything that I think that I'm. It's get, yeah. It's but getting more into computers. That's and exactly right. Like that, yeah. In fact, this last class I took was on the the. Uh, research center here, the Iowa State, Yes, and uh, they brought in representatives right. or owners of several of those uh, companies yes. to talk to us, and a lot of it was over my head because it was so much involved with computers and what they're right, doing, right. but yeah. it was just an interesting oh, it is. Up update. It is, yeah. And that? they probably had a lot of chemistry uh, involved in that. Right. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I wrote, wrote the first draft of the grant application to Ollie. To oh, be did part you? Of, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah, yeah I was uh, right about the time that Betty Lick passed away, and uh, Willie and I had to kind of run the office for about a month until we transitioned okay. uh, through all that. So, And we got to work with Jeff Johnson a lot, get into the sure. alumni, and that was really a nice move. Oh, but yeah. They've got nice facilities now, and that's I beautiful. hope you find more courses you enjoy because well, I, I'm sure I will. I just haven't uh, seen any. Well, it makes it during the winter season at least. Yeah. It makes it hard to, yeah. to get out. But the Green, Green Hills has a bus that they take over there, don't they? Yes, they do. If there are enough people yeah. sign up for any one right. class, so right. right. So it ends up that they don't take a bus to many of them oh, because okay. Okay. there are a lot of different courses and there might be a few in each class but it's yeah and it's up the road a little bit here in this cold weather <laughs> that's right that's yeah that. that's good that's good but uh, they're they're going very well we saw Gerald and Logue out here in the parking lot she's the, the chair of the, yes the, I know she is and yeah. uh, we talked to her a little bit and said we were going to be visiting with you she oh great <laughs> yeah so yeah. you're well known in Ames for being <laughs> around well, for a long time I've been around a little while, that's true. Yeah. Well, I don't think we've talked to anybody else that's over a hundred now. We we talked to uh, Lyle, can't say his last name, that was on the bowling league from, he's 98 right now and still bowling and everything. And uh, it's just great that you, you people have memories that go way, way back. Well, I... We have to have some aids quite a bit to yeah. help us <laughs> yeah. Yeah. with our memory. Yeah, that, that's good. But it, it's great just to visit and kind of pick up on the way Ames used to be. Irv Hunsicker was the same way. Yeah. Uh, talking about what Ames was like in 1940 and sure. 41 and yeah, so on. 
And Spedding, you mentioned about avoiding the draft, if you will, and continuing your education. Uh, Spedding had an arrangement through General Groves that he could get any draft board to permanently defer anybody that wanted to work on this secret project. So he brought these people, uh, Norm Carlson and Dave Peterson and so oh, on in, Ray Fisher, yeah. uh, as the but they were still going to school and stuff. And they said, well, we've got a draft number. Don't worry about it. He'd pick up the phone and call the draft board and said, don't draft this guy. And the word was out. He kept him out of the army. Right. <laughs> and, and the Manhattan Project, of course, was so secret, nobody oh, yeah. really knew. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that was a well done secret. In yeah, it really was. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's kind of fun to, to talk about that history now. I found a few pictures of what they did during the Manhattan Project. Nobody was supposed to take pictures, but somebody had a camera <laughs> and shot a few pictures. So That's, that's amazing. And nowadays you couldn't get away with that, keeping a thing like that a secret. Oh, heavens no. <laughs> well, Edna Speck told us that Harry was uh, on the project almost the, the two, yeah. two and a half years. And she said after they dropped the first weapon in on Japan in Hiroshima, Harry came home and he said, now I can tell you what I've been doing for the last two and a half years. She didn't know. Didn't know. They couldn't tell their wives or yeah. anything. And that, yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah, that. That's remarkable. That's remarkable. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, in this day and age, you'd never keep the secret. <laughs> no. <laughs> With Facebook and everything else that's on right. the computers now. Oh, yeah. There no, no secrets anymore, it seems. Yeah. Are there any classes in uh, College for Seniors, as I call it, Anything you'd like to see them talk about some of these old times and stuff? Oh, I have from time to time suggested topics when they end okay. the class, you know, they always ask. Yeah, I, I taught classes on energy yeah. for quite about four or five times and um, yes, we got a lot of good input from yeah. those. Well, they've done a good job of, of covering the okay. Okay. area and uh, I think that's been a great the fact that it draws so many people even from out of Ames. Oh, we had one student one time from Council Bluffs uh, enrolled in a class here and another one from Cedar Rapids yes. would drive over for the class. Yeah. And uh, that's marvelous. Yeah. It's a good now, reputation. <laughs> now that they're even teaching some in Des Moines, of course, some of the classes. Yeah. Thanks to Jorgen. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he got that started down there at the oh, at retirement okay. home in, in Des Moines, yeah. That's, that's great. And they're beating Drake University at their own game down there right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything else that you can remember about early Ames or something that adds <coughs> to any of this? I, I think we pretty uh, pretty well cover my recollections of, okay. of uh, the early days of those <coughs> In your community, the community that you lived in was a big thing because they yeah. you had all kinds of social activities within a neighborhood. And you had to. Had to. Yeah. And that was the that was the main thing. Yeah. And uh, the restaurants and cafes and stuff, uh, which Whetstone worked out a lot more on Lincoln Way, kind of between Duff and Grand Avenue in that area where Harris TV used to be and yes. so on. Uh, she talked about, do you remember the small restaurants and sandwich shops and stuff in that area too? I really don't uh, don't remember much about those. Uh, they, uh, that Henry's Hamburger was, yeah, Henry's was the main, main thing I remember. So I, I don't have much. Actually, we ate out very little because in yeah. those days it was pretty, you know, you had a pretty austere uh, budget oh, and yes. so eating out was uh, an infrequent thing so <laughs> the, the restaurants that were here didn't get patronized by my family very much. Uh, a, a dozen years later it was still the same way when we came in 62 Herb Hunsaker built the first house for us up at 1821 Northwestern. Oh yes. In a cornfield. Right. The Ames High School was not there yet. No. We uh, saw all of that going on and uh, the uh, hamburger stand, I want to say it was Beebe's, is that right, Willie? Yeah. 
BB's up in the, the North Grand. North Grand. We used to send or send the kids over there to buy five hamburgers for a dollar. <laughs> right. Sort of thing. That was eating out. That was eating out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, we got to see well the rise and the the fall of North Grand Shopping Center. <laughs> of course you did. Yeah. That's not much there now, but. Uh, then we later moved out into the country, ran out east of Ada Hayden Lake. So, oh, okay. Yeah, we bought a small acreage out there. And oh, we've been that's there a beautiful and, area out there. That's yeah, it really is. Yeah. We're on that riverside road that cuts between Grand and uh, yes. Dayton Road. So right. Right out by the rock quarry. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, so it's been fun and uh, so many things. Well, there again, you have to kind of fend for yourself and that's what we had to do up here reactor too. It was just like its own community mm -hmm. because we operated seven days a week, twenty four hours a day. No. And nobody else at the laboratory did that at that time. Sure. Their research was done well, more than just eight to five, but you know, in in the daytime and the graduate students and everything. We operated around the clock and it was so different. Oh yeah. And I remember Ray Fisher saying, Well how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> So that was good. Uh, is there anything about the student union and how is it expanded since you went to school well, here? Yeah, I know that's I've seen uh, several several expansions on that building. Oh yeah. And one of the, we were talking about restaurants uh, early on. One place we used to go on Sunday would be the union. Yeah. To go eat, and they had a dining room up on the second floor. Okay. And uh, when that closed, that was that was really a blow to so many of us because yeah. if we ate out on Sunday, that was always the place to go to that dining room. Was there still a dining room on the second floor of the Sheldon Mon Hotel? That, that fancy, that was kind of the place to go for. Well, now I just can't, I can't, uh, don't remember I've ever been. The only dining room that I was ever in was on the ground floor there. Well, maybe it was ground floor. I'm not okay. It was on the ground floor, just down a short distance from the uh, main desk. And okay. our, Kiwan our Kiwanis Club met there in that dining room for years okay. at noon. And that's the only dining room that I knew about in Sheldon Munn was that one on the first okay. floor. Well, Hobart Beresford. Yes. was the head of ag engineering and he and his wife lived out on our road just down the road from us and she always said that was the place to go for the Christmas dinners and so on. Okay. The big fancy spread and production. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. It had I guess elegant draperies and furniture and yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. That was in the Sheldon Mon. Okay. Right. Yeah that, that's good. Uh, in the student union They've had to close their food court and everything pretty well down now. Yes. And uh, I guess it's all remodeled now, to catering to the students. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's been a big change. Uh, and now the addition of that, uh, the, the bookstore on there is a, Isn't that something? It's a great place. <laughs> yeah. And uh, after we get all this put together here, uh, just reminded, uh, do we have your permission to, to do all of this and use it for advertising and show other people about this and Ames and everything? Well, of course. Okay, thank you, because we will end up making a, a DVD movie out of this, kind of putting it all together with some other explanations in it. And people 50 years from now won't remember what you remember. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they'll be available for Ames Historical to use. So yeah. that's what we end up doing with these. So. Incidentally, I think the Ames Historical Society is growing great guns now with your building over there that you have now. Uh, they're doing some great things. I've just been pleased with, with the progress that has been made. With that. They've come a long way. They've come a long way. They had a yeah. long way to go, of course. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 And we've been very heavily involved in the building fund drive. Okay. We headed up that drive. And Good. Uh, it just amazing. Well, you present a challenge to the people in Ames and they'll meet it and sometime here in the middle of this year that building will be totally paid for and belong to the Historical Society. And that would be great. Yeah. That's wonderful. 
Um, then if we can expand a little bit and display some of the things that Dennis Wendell is collecting and everything. Right. Yeah, that's, that's nice of you to say that, though. <laughs> well, uh, I think that's one of the really good organizations representing the city there. Yeah. Keep track of what. Yeah, and it's probably the only place that's really preserving the history, just like we're doing today, uh, the history of, uh, of Ames from the beginning. <laughs> right, you know? right. And we've gotten a lot of records and pictures and the old Andreas Atlas and everything that showed things back. They didn't have photogra photography back then. Of course. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you know Dennis Wendell. I do. Yeah. Oh, and yes. He, he has collected tons and tons of artifacts. I, I know. Uh, yeah. And now that Bert Adams property up by Dennis lives right next door to it, uh, is the city owns that right on the south oh. end of Ada Hayden Way. Yeah, right. And if they get that house sold this summer, which they just are approving the sale of it now, uh, in one more council meeting and that'll be done. Yeah. And then I've been keeping track of that from yeah. the newspaper. And then that will finish paying for the building for us. So. Great. Yeah. That'll be wonderful. If there's anything else you can think of that we should be doing, uh, we've gotten a lot of those uh, negatives, the photographs from the Tribune, sure. and that's what the Tribune is printing maybe once a week. Uh, we do a little retouching, Alan Sponheimer kind of retouches the negatives and they print that, and some of those are good reminders of what used to be right. here. Right. Yeah, we get a lot of calls and stuff, so I hope we're doing it right. Uh, you're doing a great job. Yeah, that's great. And I, I think it's marvelous the way you're up and around and <laughs> driving your own car. And well, I feel pretty uh, pretty fortunate to, to be able to do that. And, yeah. Uh, my children think I shouldn't drive out of town very much. And uh, I kid them and I say, well, you haven't driven with me. You don't know how well I can drive. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I, they know my age, of course. So yeah. they said, well, we know too many people your age that shouldn't be driving and yeah do you did you know uh, Verl Fritz uh, in uh, what department was he in actually agricultural uh, journalism Fritz yeah no I did not well a little story there his uh, his father I guess he came to, to Verl's retirement but when he was a hundred and one or so years old he's still driving his own car and I, he lives in Rippey, Iowa, west of here. Okay. I said, well, aren't you a little nervous about driving at that age? He said, everybody in town knows my car and they didn't get off the streets. <laughs> 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 Prepare the way for it. <laughs> right. Yeah, so he had a great time driving yet at 101, so. Yeah. You'll make it, you'll get there, keep, well, keep I, at it. I, st I still drive as far as Des Moines. I have a daughter living in Des Moines. Okay. And it's very simple for me. I know the route to get to her yep. house. and. Mm -hmm. So I drive down once in a while, but if the weather is bad at all, well, my yeah. daughter insists she's going to come up and pick me up if I'm going down to visit them. Yeah, she said, I'll, yeah. I'll come and pick you up and then you won't have to worry about having your car sit out on the street. Absolutely. And you're still going to the uh, the basketball game? Oh, yes. Stuff over here? Yeah. I, I uh, go to the men's particularly and then many of the women's games. Okay. They have a wonderful system here where if someone can't has tickets and can't go, <laughs> they just leave their tickets at the front desk, and anyone can pick them up. And oh, sure. So that that's a great. That is. That's a great plus. Yeah, and Fred Hoiberg is making a good record for himself. He is. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, but I hope the football team does well this coming fall too. I do too. Yeah. I think uh, generally our athletic program is oh, is, yeah. is on the upswing. Yeah, Fenley with the women's basketball right. and so on, doing great. Right. Yeah. Well, even the wrestling is coming back a little bit. Iowa didn't get first place this last week. That's what they tell me. Yeah. I, I haven't followed wrestling very much. I go maybe in one wrestling meet a season. Yeah. yeah. And that's about it. But uh, and they used to have such a great ba baseball team. Oh yeah. They had to give that up and everything, yeah. but. Uh, it, it's a good good department. I think a little better than Iowa City at the University of Iowa. Right. <laughs> They've got their problems down there this year. 
I know and known kept him for years. He, yes. because he was in my church and so. Oh, okay. Cap uh, yeah. was. He was a good baseball good, manager. Good baseball manager. He yeah, really was. that's right. Yeah. Well, isn't that old baseball field out there? Wasn't that known as uh, Tim? Yes. Tim Field. Tim yeah. Field. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, anything else that you can remember to talk about, or anything? No, I think that uh, pretty much sums up. Okay. What I can remember. I was just reminded that we're about an hour of time already. It goes fast when you're having fun, I guess. <laughs> but I don't want to cut it short if there's anything else no, you can I, do. I don't really think there is. I appreciate your... Okay. If we have questions, should we always come back or give you a call? Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. Of course. So we'll close this out then. And uh, uh, I'm Raleigh Struss from the Ames Historical Society. And we'll use this to, to help spread the word about the early remembrance and recollections in Ames. And we're talking to John Bath, and who's got a wonderful memory of what Ames was like uh, 50 and 60 years ago. So, Okay, that's it. Thank you, John. Thank you, Raleigh. Okay.